Hey guys and welcome to Top Channel 101. Uh, so I've started a new series where we're going to be looking at creating motion graphics in Blender and today we're going to be recreating this render by Clark. I think they're a production studio. It's uh, a simple animation but I think you can learn quite a lot from it if you want to access the project files and follow along uh, they're going to be on my Patreon page. So you, you get the balls coming out of uh, this hole and uh, then you turn them into a Wi-Fi logo. I, I just extended mine to uh, make it more purposeful so yeah let's recreate that and i'm just going to use a uh, circle and uh, we need a few of these uh, like three so i'm going to just grab this three times just like that some of the curves are under here and uh, then the they are cut off at the top uh, so to do that we need more subdivisions uh, because if i just grab this it doesn't create the shape i want so I can right click and subdivide but uh, if you look closely you will see that uh, the circle loses its shape it has now corners make sure that the circle holds its shape what I'm going to do is just right click and uh, convert this convert the handle type to aligned uh, that way if I make any subdivisions uh, the circle re will retain its shape now I can select the top half and uh, just pull it back uh, so we get something like because I'm using 5.0 I can even just go here and use the curve to tube modifier to add uh, some tubes just uh, like this we also need more resolution uh, so let me add that now i need to cut off half of this uh, so i can come here i want the top part to be cut off so i'm just going to come about here and make this cut and uh, i'm going to also go to objects here and change the viewport display to where so that i can easily see what i'm cutting now we're going to run into an issue because the original object here was a curve curves don't come with the boolean modifier that i want to use so what i'm going to do is just go into geometry nodes basically add a geometry nodes and set up the booleans inside here so i'm going to use the boolean mesh boolean and i want this cube let me call it cutter to be used here so bring that in set it to relative and uh, connect it as a uh, second mesh now you can see what we have uh, the holes are covered i uh, don't want that and i think i don't like the spacing I'm going to select this and uh, use S Shift Z to scale it just in the X and Y direction. Uh, that way they are not intersecting. Now I want to get rid of this piece here. There are several ways you can do that, uh, but uh, I think the easiest way is uh, to just store uh, because this is the let me just yeah this is the cutter here. Let me remove the attributes. So what you can do is select all the geometry or faces that make up that cutter by using the store named attribute. Uh, this is going to be a boolean select faces make sure you, all of the faces are selected and i can call this carter just like that and here we can get the named attribute and select all the faces named carter if we take a look at that you can see that the top faces are getting selected so i can use the delete function to delete those faces you can see we have that and that when we move this we can slide up we can slide down yeah maybe somewhere like that and uh, I can have this as the final geometry. Okay, so we have that, but we also need the plane. So I'm going to add a plane here like this, scale it up. And uh, again, we need the same original geometry. So I'm going to duplicate this, shift D, but uh, remember this has uh, this modifier, which I can remove so that we are just left with this. And uh, to keep things simple, I can just also change the display for this uh, to be wire so that uh, we can easily see what we're doing. So I'm going to grab this and again because the underlying geometry for these tubes is still a curve we don't have we can't use them in the modifiers as boolean objects so what I'm going to do is uh, grab our grid or our plane and import in these curves so that we can use the mesh boolean node in geometry nodes grab this and then bring in our geometry make sure it's set to relative so if I even hide this take a look at this I'm going to use boolean mesh mesh boolean and uh, connect this and we have our cut that is exactly as i want so you can see we have the first part set up now the second part is just setting up the balls i will have to just go back to the original i'll duplicate this and uh, remove the curve to tubes so that i have uh, these circles we're going to add the balls inside geometry nodes so let's do that uh, to do that we're going to use points node and now uh, we can set as many points as we want and uh, if you take a look at that this is what we have and uh, we're going to use a sample curve to sample uh, the position of uh, the curve we can use it to set the position of these points so these points are going to use the position 
of the curve. So if we connect that, you can see that uh, if I change the factor now, uh, this is going to always follow uh, the curve. And I can bring back the curve just for visuals. I'll use a join geometry here and I'll connect the original curves so that we can see where the point is on a curve. Perfect. Right now, all 14 points are on the curve at index 0, which is this. If I want them to jump on curve at index 1, I can just do that. But I can, you can randomize this uh, so that each point is on its curve by using the random node. If you connect it to the index, uh, we need to make it sure that it's float so that it matches the same data here. And uh, we can do... So we have 0, 1, 2 curves. So I can use the maximum, the maximum value here to be 2. That way, the position of these points is randomized on at least one of these curves. So when we change the factor here, you can see what we get. And we can have these animated by animating this fact, but I don't want to do it manually. So what I'm going to do is use the time node, connect the seconds to the factor. And if I play back, we get that. But it's not looping. Now, the easiest way to make uh, this loop is by using the modulus. So if I use a math, the math node and change this to modulus float you can see it's, it's looping but it's jumpy but uh if you want it to continuously loop you just use the modular of one and you can see that that will always loop if you want smoother animation just change the frame rate uh, to 60 frames and uh, the great thing is about this is that uh, even when you change the frame rate uh you still get the loop working they're all running at the same position now you can see that uh, they are already doing exactly what we want and I, in fact I can uh, grab this, I can use uh, the instance on points uh, the subdivision of 3, uh, the radius should be very small so you can see we, we have the setup now we have the balls going in and out and uh, there, it seems like uh, they are floating so I'm going to just move this down a bit yeah so something like that I'll use a shade smooth just like that now i also want to randomize their position on the curve and uh, that should be very very simple if you add now if you add a value to this you can see that uh, you're changing their position uh, so if you use a random value and connect it to this value basically giving each point a random position you get the setup we have and uh, you can even slow some of them down by multiplying so you can see if i multiply by 0.1 i'm basically slowing them down quite a lot but i can also use a random value so that some are slow and some are not and uh, you get other effects everything else is uh, quite easy setting up materials setting up the lighting uh you can get the project files and see how i did that uh, but uh, yeah it's quite uh, simple anyway if you want to learn more about geometry nodes check out my course uh, it should teach you most of the basics and uh, everything else. Anyway, thank you for watching. See you in the next one.